morning, church. I'm reading from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To Him who alone does great wonders, His love endures forever. To the one who remembered us in our low estate, His love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies, His love endures forever. And who gives food to every creature, His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for His love endures forever. Amen. Come, let's rise and worship our King this morning. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your, for your love, Lord, Father. For your amazing love, Father. It's because of your love, Lord, that we can stand here, Lord, freely, Lord, and worship you, Lord, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you took our place on the cross, Lord, and that you died for us, Lord, Father. You paid for our sins, Lord, Father. This morning, Lord, and as we worship you, Lord, may you receive all the glory and honor, Lord, because you alone are worthy of it, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
Because you were forsaken I'm accepted For you were condemned Now the light would well Your spirit lives within me Because you died and rose again Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, for you were condemned. Now I'm alive and well, your spirit lives within me, because you died and rose again. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, for you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit lives within me, because you died and rose again. You, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, and I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. And in all I do, I honor you. You. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you and in all I do. I honor you and in all I do.
Father, we thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for the price that you paid for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you took our place, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you tore the veil, Lord, so that we could have an access to you, Lord, Father, so we could enter your presence, Lord, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this blessing, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, Lord, your forgiveness, Lord. Help us, Lord, to never take it for granted, Lord. We thank you for this time of worship, Lord. The rest of this service, Lord, we give it into your hands, Lord. You take complete control, Lord. You teach us, Lord, from your word, Lord. You change us, Lord, and you transform us, Lord. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning church. It's time to listen to the word of God. I'm happy to come come to you once again with the word of God. Well, once there was this man. He worked all his life. Saved a lot of money. He told his wife, "When I die, I want to do one thing. Put all this money that I have earned put it in my casket." when i die my wife, wife replied to him i'll do as you say and one day he died and wife did as he told him told her to do her friend was aware of it her friend asked her i hope you're not doing what your husband told you to do and she she replied to her saying i did are you stupid He's dead and he's gone, and you have put all the money into it. He said, "Yes. What did you do exactly? Tell me exactly what did you do?" I took all the money, put it into an account, and signed a check and put it in the casket. Now let him remove how much he want and when he want and how he want. Well, it's all about obedience. How many of us like to obey? When someone tells you to do something. you immediately get up and do it difficult obedience is difficult when boss tells you to do something in front of him you will do it once he's gone oh let me do it later on when your mother tells you to do something do you immediately obey no there is a problem with obedience today we are going to listen to the word of god on obedience church let us pray father thank you Thank you for this beautiful day that it given us Lord. Thank you Lord for the wonderful time of worship this morning. Thank you Lord Jesus for speaking to us. Lord this morning as I uh, preach and teach your word Father Lord Jesus. Speak to your people through me Father. Speak through me to your people Lord Jesus. Lord I thank you Lord for this time. Thank you for your goodness over our life. In Jesus name I pray. Before we could go on to the word of God I want to bring to you two stories on obedience. We remember the story of Noah. The story comes to my mind when I think about obedience. Constant obedience. Noah obeyed God over and over again. He obeyed God He was a just man and perfect in his generation. He was chosen to build an ark. When God commanded to build an ark and to make provision for himself and his family 
and animals he did exactly what god told him to do church when god tells us to do something and when we obey god will provide protection to your family to my family to our families in the church and he will not only just protect he will bless our family exact obedience noah did not compromise on the word of god what god has told him to do it there is no compromise for us too when god tells us to do something it's not like for example uh, we have to give tithes in the church and i'll do everything what i want no complete obedience you can't be saying i'll do certain things in the church and monday to saturday i can do what i want no complete obedience to god and god's word and god what he wants us to do unwavering obedience from noah let us picture eyes now god told him to build an ark he started his work the people around him they mocked they laughed at noah what are you doing it has not rained for so long and now it is going to rain forget about it just enjoy life we are all are enjoying but noah did not pay any attention to them all that he had in his mind is to obey god that's it and what god has told him to do and that's it no way in the similar way in our life when god has told us to do something let us do it with obedience there are many people who will discourage you are how you are going to church all the time all the time prayer cell meeting you are busy all the time in the church they try to demotivate you discourage you all that we need to do is obey god's word and obey what god has told us to do in the place of refuge God protected Noah and his family in the ark. Similar way God provides makes gives us a place of refuge in our family in our home together. Now for Noah it was refuge from the floods that was taking place outside. God provided put his family in the ark for us today. for us today what is the flood what god is pro- god should protect us from god will protect us from the evil of this world the wickedness of this world as we obey him he will protect us he will bless us bless us and god remembered noah when he trained 40 days and 40 nights well his obedience to god got remember noah and the next part when when god when they obeyed god when god intervened they offered sacrifice to god they offered sacrifice to god we praise god all the time as we obey him god will protect us your family our family and he will bless us story on obedience perfect obedience i want to bring to you another story from the bible the story of saul when god commanded to destroy the city which he would conquer what did saul do he took the matter into his hand he said let me sacrifice this and when he did that he disobeyed god god rejected as king well my word today it's all about obedience it's all about obedience we cannot say wow this word sometime we come to a place you know this word with the preacher preached the word wow excellent word excellent word but you know that word i know exactly who it is it is for my brother who is sitting behind or it is for my sister who is sitting right in front it's time then when god speak to us through the man of god the word 
is for us. It is for me. As I preach to you this word, this word is for me too. Right? It is for us to change, to reflect on ourselves. Once there was this, uh, this pastor who was new, newly appointed pastor. He was a young pastor. When he preached on Sunday, it was a wonderful message. Everybody was happy. Everybody was clapping. Wow, what, what a pastor we had got today. He preaches such a message. So next Sunday, all have waiting, anticipating. Wow, he is going to come up with something. Wow, from the all of the world, he's going to speak to us. Second Sunday, he preaches the same message what he preached on the first Sunday. Now people thought, give him benefit of doubt. Okay, fine. His second Sunday probably he must have he, he must have not got time to prepare the word of God. So that's the reason he must share the same message. Now the third Sunday, third Sunday also he preaches the same message. Are what's wrong with him? Three Sunday continue consecutive. Three Sunday same message. Ah, they were quiet. Sometime the fourth Sunday they have come well prepared, well prepared. Fourth Sunday, he preaches the same message. Service got over, the leaders got together, they confronted him. How can you preach same message for all four Sunday? You don't have anything, and they will just bounce on it around. Just relax. Let me allow me to speak. How many of you have heard the word and have put it into practice yet? There was no answer from them. There was no answer from them. Their hearts were convicted. They were convicted of not obeying what has been preached. Today, this morning, I'm going to read to you James chapter 1 verse 22 to 25 but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself if for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror for he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was but he looks into perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forget forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this one will be blessed in whatever he does it's all about obedience it's all about obedience we'll take the first line to be the doers of the word and not a hearers only and deceiving yourself where what James is saying is you can't be hearing and not obeying it's like you're deceiving yourself right a person knows it is wrong to get drunk but does it anyway is a victim of self-deception a person knows it is wrong to commit adultery but does it anyway is a victim of self-deception a person knows about the sin, about the wrongdoing, does it anyway, is a victim of self-deception. Let me share with you one story. In 1920 in America, there was this person called John Dillinger. He was a famous, he was smart. If he would have used his smartness in the right way, probably he would have lived longer and done something great in America but he was a famous robber he used his intelligence to rob he would rob in such a way he would be in your house front of your own eyes he would rob you would not even come to know you would only come to know once he left your house in the similar way what he used to do is he should rob banks he would create a scene that as if the shooting is going on a movie shooting or serial shooting is, shooting is going on and people are just watching right front of the eyes he would rob and he would take the money and go vanish away and people are just watching what when the hero is going to come hero, hero is come hero is gone 
Now let us take the same example. He does the same thing. He robs a bank now. Okay? He robs a bank and he vanishes. Now he's celebrating with his partner. Yes, we are achieved. We did once again. Suddenly, another one of his partner tells him, Sir, we robbed our own bank. What? We robbed our own bank. How can this be? Yes, we, we, we robbed our own bank. That's called self deception. Well, we hear the word of God on Sunday after Sunday. Once we go out of the church, or once the, the service is over, online service is over, we have forgotten what has been preached. Right? The devil is very happy. Let me not go near close to Christians. They will hear the word of God. By the time I don't have to use my trees, by the time get out of uh, get out of this, they have forgotten what is happening. Point number one was, I was talking about, it's all about obedience. Point number two, hearing the word is like looking in a mirror. For reference, you can check scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 12. James 1 verse 23 and 24. I'll read. He's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. And he observes himself, goes away and immediately forget what kind of man he was. Now just imagine a person gets up in the morning, he looks himself in the mirror, he's looking very shabby, he say, okay fine, let me have breakfast and then come back and do all what I have to do. Once he finished breakfast, then he goes on to read newspaper. And by the time he finishes news, reading news, he just realizes he has to go to go to work. It's time to go to work. He just goes, dresses up. And he forgets what he has seen in the morning when he got up. What, a what does James say? James says, the per what a person is like who looks into God's word, sees what needs to do, then does nothing about it. Does nothing about it. You hear the word of God. You hear the word of, you listen to the word of God and you do nothing about it. You forgot what you need to do. Second point, third point in the outline is perfect law of liberty. When you look into the word of God, it's one point I just missed out on, on the mirror. See, when you look into the mirror, you see yourself physical. Physically, you see yourself and you, you correct yourself. In a similar way, when you look into the mirror of God, God is going to show you something. God is going to speak to you and correct you. He will help you to get out of the wrong things that are going in your life. We heard the word of God last Sunday where Uncle Donald was sharing about teaching your children the word of God. We need to focus on the word of God. It reflects when the mirror of God reflects our emotion, our mental, our spiritual aspect. Physical mirror only. Uh, the natural mirror, it's only about physical aspect. But here God mirror, it talks about spiritual aspect. aspects. So we need to meditate on the word of God. We need this mirror, what happens is when you meditate on the word of God, when you look, for example, you look into the mirror or you look into your mobile. I'm not against mobile. I'm not against people using mobile. I myself use mobile. I myself click pictures of myself as a families and all. And when you look into the mirror, 
you take selfie right and you want that selfie selfie to be good and suddenly you realize i don't know if it's it's a trend it's every youngster uses so i'm not against it i'm just trying to make it a point you just look like this you click a picture of yourself you, or you look somewhere else as if like you know you can't see you make weird faces but when you look into the chill mirror of god what it says it says you are fearfully and wonderfully made the mirror of god that's word of god will never lie if it will tell you who you are if there's something wrong it will correct you it will teach you it will protect you it will bless you so we go into the uh, the next point is so the perfect law of liberty when we listen to the word of god we listen to the perfect word of god what it says in james chapter 25 but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this will be uh, this one will be blessed in whatever he does psalm 19 verse 7 say the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul John chapter 8 was 31 and two, uh, 31 and 32 say Jesus said to the Jews who believed him if you abide in my word you are my disciple indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free the word of god is perfect it's powerful it will help us it will you, the word of god can set you free from bondage from sin from depression from guilt i remember uh, it uh, a small tiny bird And this bird aim was she, this bird wanted to be the international bird of a country and this unique feature of this bird what it could fly at the speed of 150 171 km per hour and this bird would exercise one day this bird thinks i am too fat if, if i have to go faster than what what i am doing right now i have to, i need some light weight the bird was already thin slim and trim just think that is how wings the feathers are causing the weight so the what does this bird does try to remove those wings feathers one by one and the result this bird could fly no more with the same speed same things in our life this word of god the perfect word of god talks to us when we read it says forgive it's, it's difficult to forgive continue doing what you're doing no i can't do it i can't obey the word of god is to be faithful in what you are doing no see my friends i enjoy so you try it a person try to remove all these things thinking like this is the burden and you try to set you free into this world the evil world word of god is perfect christ jesus christ takes a heavy burden and replace it with his yoke we need christ yoke his command commandments are not hindrance but our freedom god wants us to fly we need his word daily we just need the word and we need to obey the word that's how god is going to protect us and bless us looking into the word of god looking the point number 4 is looking into the word it's like you are taking a walk in your garden a leisure walk you just go for a walk and you 
find something in the garden, something fleshy things, and you don't know what it is. You go closer into it, you go deeper into it, and you find out what is it. You realize, realize there's something unique creature. You try to click picture of that, and then you try to upload it on the Facebook and Instagram, on the social media, wherever you can. You send it to your friend through WhatsApp. In the similar way, when we dig into the Word of God, when we read the Word of God, God is going to speak to each and every one of us. As we know, as we know, the full book, the Bible is of Logos. And when you read it, it is going, when you read it, God is going to speak to you. His Rima word is going to come to you. Israel, my word is going to come to you. Psalm 1 verse 2 says, Bless, Blessed is the one who delights, who, who, whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on it day and night. Day and night. There was a story about a family who would read the word of God, who would read the word of God, not only just read the word in one language, they would try to different language, study the word of God. If you go into their house, you will see all the scriptures on the wall. One day they go for a vacation and when they are back from the vacation, they realize their house is burned, everything is burned. Full of disappointment and discouragement. No food to eat, no money, no nothing. This family started praying meditating on the word of God God restored everything back to them they started new business they started working things are working wonder and they continue reading the word of God and obeying what God has called them to do continue in the word of God now you might say continue in the word of God I've been I'm a believer for 10 years I'm a believer for 20 years 20 years or 30 years I've read the word of God now I'm tired no no, your work is not over. Continue reading the word of God. It says, James 1.25 says, the, uh, He who looks into the perfect law of liberty continues in it. Continues in it. In English, the word be is easy to pass by. But in Greek, there is a lot more in information. Keep on being. Keep on being. Some people say, I've tried Jesus for long. I've tried, you know, I tried, I tried reading the word of God, but nothing worked out for me. Jesus is not something, a recipe that you tried and you failed. You need to continue. A person need to continue. God is looking at, what is God looking at? God is looking at your commitment. Your commitment to what you're doing, what he has called you to do. What he has called you to do. And point number six, we turn into blessing. I'll see the scripture says, He who looks in, into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in whatever he does. Now, wait a minute. What does it mean that I'll be blessed only? If I obey, does it come to grace? Does it come by grace? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. The blessing is already asked through grace. But there is something we need to understand. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. There are few who finds it. Right? There is there are two ways, one way which which leads to life. Protection. 
on the other way which leads to destruction when you and i started following christ we have faced many hurdles and obstacles but praise god jesus allowed us to overcome those obstacles as we have discussed about the word of god tells us to be to be committed and you get tired times you get tired of commitment should we give up when you give up when a person gets up and goes and does with everyone does because the wide is away everyone is enjoying doing you're going to church on sunday they are doing something else and they are having fun going for picnic and things like that sacrificing you're going away from the blessing the person is going away from the blessing stick to your blessing well we have looked we'll go back to the story of noah we we'll see that we can grieve the heart of god when we see it god, god was grieved when he saw his people were sinning he was grieved when he saw his people were just doing what they want and he wanted to destroy it saw Noah who was obedient what is speaks to us this way the world is doing what they want should we continue with them it craves god's heart when his people continue doing what the world is doing god always provides a way for us to begin again with him Remember this remember the starting when Adam and Eve they disobeyed God before that they could interact with him they had relationship Adam had relationship with God God would speak the uh, God would speak to uh, Adam and Adam would talk to God the relationship was broken but praise God Jesus came God sent his son only son to die on the cross and restores a relationship back to him you cannot say i'm tired no we need to continue talking to him he talks to us we will not always understand god and his ways but we can trust him no i did not understand that that god will ask him to build an ark god is going to save him in that ark. He didn't even think about it whether it's going to rain or not. He just obeyed. He just obeyed. Sometimes we don't understand God's plan. How God wants us to do what God wants us to do. We just need to obey what God tells us to do. We just need to obey. We can obey God even if the world thinks we are crazy. Right? remember what i said people are making mocking and making fun of noah no matter what people say you know the whole church goes a he, he always goes to church at a church when you think about things of god you're thinking about the heavenly things heavenly things and all things are possible with god all things are possible with god Jesus paid until death the best story in the bible on obedience if we want to learn more on obedience we need to learn and study the word of god of jesus christ how he obeyed i will conclude my message we have seen complete it's all about obedience it's all about obedience then we have seen that point number 2 we look at ourselves in the mirror that's the word of god when we look into the word of god it's going to speak to us 
we are looking into the perfect word of god we are looking into the perfect word of god and we are seeing god's blessing continue in word of god continue you in meditating on the word of god never giving up till we meet him face to face amen thank you church i hope you are blessed thank you let us pray father i thank you lord thank you for this time thank you for speaking to us thank you for blessing us with this word father thank you for your goodness over our life i make this prayer in jesus name i pray Be less and your blessings be more. And God's people say, Amen. Amen.